Hi folks, uh, this is uh, Monday the 14th of uh, September and it's about uh, 1 p.m. just a little bit after and uh, welcome to our uh, early week uh, prayer time uh, for Trinity United Methodist Church. I'd like to start with just a scripture and then I will share uh, the updated prayer list with you for today and then we will close this time uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, once again, uh, um, God has been very good to us on Sunday mornings, giving us good weather to worship uh, outside, uh, and uh, we are we are doing very well, and it was a good uh, uh, Sunday this Sunday. We are also in the middle of testing an FM transmitter, and so uh, one of the future options here very soon, maybe even this coming weekend, uh, would be for folks to pull in the driveway and stay in their vehicle and uh, join us for worship uh, from there and just uh, dial in. Uh, their FM station. So uh, um, keep an eye out for future uh, uh, information on that. Uh, we should have some updates on Saturday morning on that uh, weekly update. Uh, but uh, let's get started with our, our prayer time for right now. I want to share a, a proverb with you that has to do with prayer. I've been starting these prayer times off with a short scripture, and this is Proverbs 15 and verse 8 that says this, The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. We have no idea sometimes how much God loves our prayers and loves for us to communicate with him. That is our choice to either do that or not do that, but God is so pleased when we choose uh, to do so. That's what means the most to him. And so prayer is very important, not only to our lives as individuals, uh, but also to our life as a body of Christ, uh, uh, Trinity United Methodist Church. And so um, these are the prayers of the upright that we are um, joining together in on Mondays, and uh, thanks again for joining us. Let me share with you some of the prayer requests. Uh, we want to continue to pray for our school administrators and our teachers and our students and the parents and everybody who's involved uh, with the schooling this year uh, with this nasty virus uh, still uh, out and about. Uh, makes things difficult, and we have to do things differently than we've ever done them before, but um, I haven't heard an update recently, but I believe uh, no news is good news when it comes to this. And so I think um, school systems around here are doing pretty good uh, with what they have to work with and, and keeping everybody safe and so forth. But let's continue to pray for them. I know the administrators especially have to make some tough decisions some days. So, so let's be praying for them that they'll have God's wisdom in all that they do and that uh, our whole school systems can stay safe and uh, really, really get through this time successfully. Um, I also, and I failed to mention it last Monday, um, it was yet to be at that time, it's kind of past us right now, but not too late to remember. It's never too late to remember those who need our prayers, and I want to remember the 9-11 uh, families. That was 19 years ago um, that that happened, that tragedy that happened in New York City and uh, Pennsylvania and Washington, D.C., as the Pentagon uh, got hit as well. But uh, a lot of family members were lost um, during those terror attacks uh, here on our soil. And uh, we don't want to ever forget uh, what happened on that day, and especially those families who've been left behind. And uh, life has not gone how they've planned it, uh, certainly, but um, they need our prayers. Um, even 19 years later, they need our prayers, I believe. Uh, because they're still living with memories of that day, 9-11 um, of uh, 01, and and, uh, and the loss of loved ones at that time. So um, let's be praying for those families. Let's remember them this week, if you would, with me. Also, a friend of uh, Tina Rambusik's, um, who has had some real uh, serious kidney issues. She is now on dialysis uh, for kidneys and is going to need a transplant uh, here in the near future. Uh, but her name is Carrie Miller. It's uh, spelled M-U-E-L-L-E-R, but pronounced Miller. So Carrie Miller needs our prayers for her uh, kidney uh, situation um, uh, in the upcoming transplant. I also want to remember um, folks on the West Coast. It seems like, boy, they've had their share of uh, things happening this year, but with the fires, um, it has just, uh, to say that they're out of control this year, I think is a pretty good description. Uh, but from California to Oregon to Washington, all of our West Coast, uh, the fires and the weather has been just right, almost like the perfect storm for these fires to kick up and, 
And I know we've got uh, folks in our community who either know people or our family have family on the West Coast, and they're being affected by these fires. So, um, matter of fact, uh, Pam Welso's aunt, uh, who lived in uh, southern Oregon, um, that's where her home is, lost her home. And uh, her entire small community of 76 homes was actually destroyed and lost uh, during fires in the past week or so. So let's be praying for uh, Pam's aunt out there in Oregon, but also all family members and friends and, and just the folks who are being affected negatively by these fires. Um, let's be praying for them in a special way. Uh, continued prayers then for some who've been on our prayer list for a while. Tony O'Malley, who fights leukemia. Uh, Doug Kuhn. Um, who uh, has non-Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma. Um, he is actually, and I need to give you an update on Doug. Um, Chris got a hold of me and let me know that he is going in uh, this Wednesday, the 16th, uh, down to Fredert, and uh, he's going to be doing two or three days of chemo to prepare himself and to get ready for a bone marrow transplant. And uh, their son, Todd, is actually going to be the donor. And so prayers for Todd and for Doug and for Chris and for everybody who's going through this together this week. Um, let's keep them in our prayers and um, just remember them as they go uh, through this time uh, together. Bob Hesbrick also. Haven't heard from Bob yet, but uh, I, I'm hoping he's doing better from his four-wheeler accident. But continued prayers for him. Ann Katinger uh, had been doing well, went back in the hospital. Uh, this is a friend of Pat Burmeister's, went back in the hospital this week. Uh, suffering from colon cancer, and, and I think she was in two or three days, and then they may have sent her home. So I'm not sure exactly what that was about, but uh, continued prayers for Ann to continue to progress in positive ways. Um, Gary Jesse also um, doing treatments for prostate cancer. Keep Gary in your continued prayers and, and uh, so forth during this time. Stacy Grunwald also. Uh, Stacy uh, is uh, Patty Cobb's daughter who broke her foot or her ankle, and um, uh, she needs our continued prayers for healing, but let's continue those. Brenda Bergman also has been fighting cancer for quite a while, so prayers for Brenda. Tracy Rowan also, Scott uh, Krieger's sister, um, uh, I, I know has finished up some treatments uh, for cancer. And uh, so let's uh, can keep up our continued prayers for Tracy as well as uh, Raymond uh, uh, Kittleson. Ray Kittleson is a friend of the Kino family, and uh, I know he was preparing to get back into chemo here Um in the in the recent past, so I'm, I'm guessing he's probably in those treatments right now. So continued prayers for him. Andy Dilling, of course, uh, Bruce and Carol's uh, uh, son, uh, came through his uh, appendectomy okay. It was not a normal appendectomy. Those are almost standard and almost common anymore. Uh, Andy's case, his uh, appendix ruptured, and so it was very, very serious. But he got through that, spent about a week in the hospital, and is now home recovering. Uh, let's continue to pray for Andy's healing up from that surgery, that he'll get his strength back real soon. Uh, I know he's in the middle of some projects like trying to get a house up and finished and this kind of thing before the cold weather hits. And so prayers for Andy to get his strength back and maybe for other family members to, uh, I, I know the Dilling family does this, but uh, for them to pitch in on this house project and so forth. So we remember Andy today too. And folks, for, for your unspoken prayers, for all those that we haven't mentioned, but things that are on your heart, let's uh, take a moment and lift those up as well as we pray together today. Would you go before God in prayer with me? Let's pray together. Gracious God, I just thank you so much uh, for this day and for this time that we can pause um, in this busy week and uh, that we can take the time to lift our joys and concerns before you. Uh, we're just so thankful. Uh, Lord God, for good weather on Sunday mornings and that we were able to worship again with a good group this past Sunday morning. Uh, continue to bless us with those times that we can uh, uh, worship safely outdoors and uh, be the body of Christ, uh, really not only outdoors outside the church, but, but every place we're at. This is a good object lesson for all of us uh, to know what the body of Christ is supposed to be. So thank you for these opportunities and for the great weather. Uh, we just give you thanks and, and come to you today with thankful hearts. But Lord, there, there are those who need you in special ways right now, and we just lift them to you. We continue to lift our school administrators and, and uh, um, teachers and students and parents and everybody who's involved in this uh, education process this year. It's being done differently, differently than we've ever had it done before because of this uh, pandemic that we happen to be in. 
But I just pray for your wisdom to be there for the administrators and the teachers as they have to make some tough decisions day in and day out uh, regarding the health and welfare of our students and also trying to get them educated at the same time and, uh, you know, socially connect them as well. All these things are so important. But we just pray that you'll be in the center of all that they're doing and that they will have your wisdom in all that they do. Lord, we lift up the 9-11 families too, and we pray for them today. We just uh, ask that you would uh, uh, be with all those families who 19 years ago, their lives changed in the blink of an eye uh, to be something different. And, and many of them are still trying to get over the loss of loved ones from that day. So just be with them and bless them in special ways this year. And be that comforting presence for those who need it uh, right now. Lord, I pray for Carrie Miller, too, this friend of uh, Tina Rambusics, who's having kidney issues. We just pray for her as she goes through dialysis, that you would help her through this time. But also, Lord, I just pray that uh, you would um, uh, help her to find the, the, the kidney for this transplant that she needs as well. And, and just uh, uh, help the doctors and whoever's looking for this kidney. Just help them with this process so that uh, Carrie will be all set here for the future. Lord, we pray for that to come together and to happen. And um, we just pray for you to intervene in this case. Lord, I pray for all those on the West Coast, too, who have uh, lost uh, loved ones or lost property or, or lost a way of life. Um, these fires have just been devastating this year. And so we lift up those families and friends and acquaintances and even those we don't know, Lord God. We are praying for them, too, who've uh, gone through some terrible loss this year. Just watch over them. Help them to know which foot to put forward as they go ahead. Lord God, how to proceed forward, how to get on with life. Lord, we just pray that you'll be in the center of all that's going on there, too. And I pray that the church will be the church in their area as well, to the best of their ability. And Lord, if there's something more we can do, let us know in the midst of these tragedies. Lord, be with Tony O'Malley. Uh, continue to be with Tony as he fights leukemia. Be with Doug Kuhn. Lord, as he uh, transitions this week down to Freighter on Wednesday and gets ready for this bone marrow transplant, we're just so thankful for Todd, um, uh, Doug and Chris's son, who's going to be the donor for this. We pray for him, too, as he preps and gets ready for this in every way. Um, but uh, be with Doug and Chris and, and Todd, the rest of the family, too, as they go through this time together. Keep them in your special care, Lord God. Wrap your arms around them. Carry them through this time. And we pray for good results from this bone marrow transplant, too. Continue to be with Bob Hesbrick as he heals up from his accident. Be with Ann Katinger. Lord, we know she was back in the hospital this week. Not sure of the details there, but you know. You know what's going on and what Ann needs today. And uh, from what I hear, she keeps saying what I really need is prayer. And Lord, we're going to get that. We're going to give that to her. Um, offer her the gift of prayer. And so we're coming before you on her behalf and just asking that you would be in the center of all that's going on with Ann. Uh, just keep her in your care and lift her up and carry her through this time. Be with Gary Jesse too as he continues his treatments for prostate cancer and be with Sandy and as they go through this time together. Just watch over them, Lord God. Give them some good days here. And, and uh, we just pray for Stacy Grunwald. We, we're praying that her broken ankle is healing up as well and pray that you will continue to uh, help her to move ahead. Be with Brenda Bergman, too. Been praying for Brenda for quite a while. Be with her and her family, though, Lord God, as she continues to fight cancer. Uh, I just pray for her and that you will uh, watch over her. And, and Tracy Rowan as well, Scott Krieger's sister. We've been praying for Tracy for quite a while. I believe she's probably through some treatments now, but uh, wherever she's at in the process, just watch over Tracy. Keep her in your care. We also continue to pray for Ray. Ray Kittleson, this friend of Kino's, Lord, who's uh, maybe in the middle of some treatments right now. Last we heard, he was getting ready for it. But uh, just be with Ray and all that he's going through and keep him close to you. Lord, thank you so much. We are so thankful that you watched over Andy Dilling and all that he went through. We're thankful, Lord God, that he came through the surgery okay, came through those days in the hospital okay, and was then released to go home to recover. But Lord, that's some of the hardest parts. That's when it begins is when you get home and you still have to heal up and you still have to pace yourself. And I know that's going to be hard for Andy. So just watch over him. Give him your wisdom too and help him to, to listen and to be obedient to that still small voice. Lord, as you speak to him, as you help him through this time. Lord, for all those silent prayers that remain in our hearts, we lift them up to you right now and we take a moment to do just that.
And Lord, we thank you for this time that we can lift up our silent prayers as well to you, knowing full well that you are a God who loves us, who cares for us, and um, who will watch over us and will answer our prayers, Lord God, in your perfect way and in your perfect time. We thank you for that. And Lord, now as we close this time of prayer, we pray now the way Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for joining us for this prayer time today. God bless. Have a great week.